Welcome to the Outreachy Colonel Internship Report. I am Allison Schofield, the current Linux Kernel Community Coordinator, and I will be introducing you to our most recent cohort, Beatrice, Deborah, Mitali, Samara, and Janzea, who have all recently completed Outreachy internships. Outreachy its goal is to increase diversity in open source. Um, anyone who's facing underrepresentation, systemic bias, discrimination in the industry is invited to apply. These interns get to work with experienced mentors in many free and open source software communities. I believe at last I peaked um, over a hundred different FOSS communities have participated in outreaching. These internships are paid. This, the, the interns receive a $6,000 stipend. These internships are remote. Both the interns and mentors work remotely. They've always been remote, just like for the Linux kernel world. Much of our work is done with people across the globe that we only see on mailing lists and, and now in a lot of Zoom meetings. These internships last for three months and do require a full-time commitment. They're offered twice per year, May to August, December to March. For FOSS communities, like the Linux kernel community, coordinators sign up their communities in each round. Mentors submit projects under a community and community coordinators approve the projects. That's the state we're in today as I record this video. We are seeking out mentors for Linux kernel projects. For the interns, they fill out an initial application where they check to make sure that they're at, they meet the eligibility criteria. Um, and then they go ahead and make contributions to FOSS communities according to that community's guidelines and they fit a, submit a final application to a community and project. Here's a little more on the timeline. This is the round that we're in right now. Um, the initial application deadline has passed. The project list is not yet finalized. Um, once that is finalized, the contribution period will begin. And this is, aside from the internship itself, it's like the most busiest and the most exciting time of the whole process. Um, after that contribution period, interns submit a final application to the project they want. The interns are announced and their internship period begins. This timeline repeats. So we do, we do this whole thing twice a year. So that kernel contribution period, um, for 30 days, um, the applicants, the mentors, and all group of additional patch reviewers um, are in close collaboration, supporting these interns and helping them through the application process. They join a special mailing list, they complete a first patch tutorial, and they submit their first patch to the Linux kernel. And this is a thing to be celebrated. If you go no further, they get in your first submit accepted. Not, I should, did I say submitted? Accepted in the Linux kernel. Whoo hoo, you know, that's something to celebrate. And you will see, you know, the interns all in their blogs and, and their social media celebrating the day they got their first patch accepted. Um, now, once they get past that, they start working with mentors to do some small project specific tasks to see if they can find a project that would be suitable for them. Finally, they'll record their contributions and submit a final application. So the Linux kernel has a long history in Outreachy. We've been in it since 2013, more than 55 interns and mentors have been in this program. There have been six community coordinators so far. I'm number six. I'd like to um, mention the prior five, um, Sage Sharp, who started this whole thing. Um, 
Julia Lawal, who continues to be super active um, on the mailing list and a mentor in the program, Vishali Thacker, Shadra Bark, Helen Koike. Um, Vishali and Helen were just doing it this past round and have decided to pass the torch on to me. Um, now, Vishali, Shadra, Helen and I are in a, a special club. We are also outreachy alumni. All of us were originally outreachy interns and some of us then were outreachy mentors and then outreachy coordinators. So as you can see, um, once you get hooked in this program, you, you keep participating. Um, and it's not just us organizers. There's a whole additional group of volunteers that make Outreachy happen. Former mentors, um, other Linux kernel maintainers and developers all pitch in during that contribution period to make the program a success. So what, is, what do the interns do? Well, they contribute across the board in the Linux kernel. Pimenta can define a project um, with a, a scope that is good for an intern. It can come into Outreachy. And here's a laundry list of all the things that the interns have done. And additionally, it's interesting to note that the Outreachy group has been a top contributor to the Linux kernel for pretty much every kernel release. When the numbers are published, the volunteers of Outreachy a lot of it is due to what happens in that contribution period. They do so many cleanup patches across, throughout the stage and drivers that they end up being a top contributor to the Linux kernel. So this cohort today, and they are, they've done an amazing job. Here is their list of projects. Again, there's drivers and there's the course scheduler. Um, these are not simple projects. I'm excited for you to listen to their presentations. And this presentation has been given um, once or twice a year. We, we bring out the interns and they present their projects. And every time there's somebody in the audience who says, wow, I didn't know that they did that much. And they're always super impressed. So I'm looking forward to you being impressed right now. Um, let's get it started and we'll have Beatrice tell you about her internship first. Hello, my name is Beatrice Carvalho and I'm here on the Outreach Kernel Internship Report to show you about my internship on the project Improvement on the Kernel GPU Subsystem. My mentors was Melissa Wen and Daniel Vether. I'm from Brazil, but I've been living in Portugal for almost two years. I'm a computer engineer with emphasis on the embedded systems. Of course, my interest area is the Linux kernel. When I start my internship, my object was create a new feature and better understand how the DRM core works. To achieve this objective, I choose two tasks, clean up the debug FS support and remove custom dump map offset implementations. After deciding the two tasks, the internship goals was use the coccinelli to filter functions, refactor the code, run the new code with VKMS, and learn how to work with the Linux community. Very ambitious, right? But the plans change sometimes. So what I did? During the event, the first task, we found that it couldn't be carried out as intended. So it needed to be restructured and change what I would, would do. Resulted in created the function vkms config show to which I meant to print the data in DRM the big FS create files. 
And during the value of these functions, I came across an improvement in the code where I replace a macro in a VKMS release. Both activity had arrived arrived being reviewed and I proved to be part of the DRM MISC tree. In the middle checkpoint <clears throat> was realized that uh, I was not going to be able to do the second task because it is in another context and could take a long time to me understand how it works and how to solve, solve it. So we drop off. I continue working in the VKMS config debug, try convert into a struct proposed by Ambui Karuga. It was a previous intern in the project. But when I realized the internship ended arrived and I could finish this activity. I learned a lot of things during my internship. How to use the Git, how to debug the kernel, how the development, development kernel cycle works. But I think the most important where Linux kernel development is not linear. Several things can happen. You can, can, we can have set up problems a lot of times. Sometimes we're broken the kernel and sometimes not knowing what to do. So when this happens, it's very, very important you take a deep brief and step back to saw what happened and what I need to do to fix it. And other things that I learned is the outreach goal is learning how to contribute in the open source and how I can work with the project chose. The experience that I have with my internship on the Linux kernel was amazing, beyond that I imagined, because I feel support and encouraged to explore the Linux kernel, how the web cycle works, uh, and as and I and I was encouraged to ask help both with my mentors and the, with community and how it work with the community. Because this, I learned a lot of things uh, like the importance of communication, that it's very important to be clear clear about what I work, explain what. Uh, why I do this, uh, the modification or what I would do improvement with this mod modification, for example. And during this time, I learn have more self-confidence in what I do and what I w was working. And I start back uh, to enjoy programming. Eh, I know, it's crazy, but it's true. And because this, I think the most important is I want to continue working and contributing to the Linux kernel. So, in, I would like to say thank you to thanks to Outreach Program to this opportunity for uh, work with Linux kernel, and thanks to my mentors Melissa and Daniel for taking your time to teach me. Please feel free to follow me in my blog Open Sorceries where I post about my outreach internship and I will continue to post about my discovery about Linux kernel world and other things. So thank you very much for your attention. Have a good day. Hi, my name is Deborah Brower. I was an outreach intern from May to August of 2021. The name of my project was improving the HDMI CEC compliance tests and the CEC emulation of the Vivid driver. My mentors were Hans Verkau and Johan Fielsvecht. About me, I live in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, and I study computer science at Thompson Rivers University. 
So to understand my project, you need to understand what is CEC. It stands for Consumer Electronics Control, and it allows devices that are connected by HDMI to communicate with each other. It's mainly used in home theater systems. So on my slide, there is an example. Um, we have a TV that's in standby mode. It's connected by an HDMI cable to a playback device. A playback device is just anything that plays content to the TV, like a DVD player or a streaming device like a Chromecast. When you press play on the playback device, it can send a CEC message through the cable to the TV to wake it up first before it starts playing. So CEC is a convenience. It saves you from having to um, separately wake up the TV once you press play on your playback device. It can be a lot more complicated than what I've shown on my slide. There can be up to 15 connected devices um, all talking to each other and they can include uh, TV, multiple playback devices, audio systems, tuners, and recording devices. So the first part of my internship was focused on CEC compliance tests. CEC is a protocol and it's part of the HDMI specifications. So devices that use CEC have to follow the protocol rules um, so that everyone is speaking the same language and their behavior is predictable. Uh, so a compliance test would check that um, a device is following those rules. So here's an example on the slide. Uh, say your TV is playing and um, you, you press pause on the TV remote control. The TV could send the pause message to the playback device. The playback device would pause the media and then the playback device is required to send a status update back to the TV to let it know that it successfully paused. If the playback device doesn't send that status message back, then um, the playback device is not compliant with the CEC protocol and the compliance test would check that. The compliance tests are in the video for Linux utilities and I focused on three of them specifically, uh, deck control, one touch record, and timer programming. The second part of my internship uh, focused on the Vivid Driver the Vivid Driver is a test driver. It emulates real hardware devices so that application developers can test their applications um, without having to own all the specialized hardware in which their application might run. Vivid emulates CEC devices and it had a bug in it where occasionally it would lose messages. So on my slide is an example of how this would happen. The TV is sending a get info message at the same time that the playback device is sending a play message. You can't have uh, simultaneous connect, uh, messages transferring in both directions, so the TV gets priority and the playback device has to back off. The playback device will try again, but on my slide, the TV continues to send get info messages and um, after four times, the playback device will just give up and the message is lost. So that was the bug. Um, our first attempt to solve the problem used an existing internal kernel API called the CEC PIN framework. The PIN framework is used by really rudimentary CEC hardware that just controls the CEC PIN on the HDMI connector but we found that it required pin level timings that were too sensitive to emulate. If we had timer overruns um, greater than 0.3 milliseconds, messages would still be lost. The successful solution was a whole new algorithm that re-implemented the CEC bus. It used message level timings, so the timer requirements were not as sensitive and it also used uh, signal free time requirements, which basically forced the devices to take turns sending messages and um, to share the line better. So what did I learn during my internship? I learned how to write code with 
uh, the help of other people. So I learned what is a code review and what's it like um, to get feedback and to iteratively change and improve your code based on that feedback. Uh, I learned how to approach a really large code base, how to use tools like Git and the virtual machine and the GDB the debugger, how to read and interpret HDMI specifications, how to write a compliance test, what a kernel driver looks like, how it's organized, and how to use kernel functions like locks and timers and threads, and how to do kernel debugging. So that's it for me. I want to especially thank my mentors, Hans and Johan, for so generously sharing their time and expertise with me. Thank you to the Outreachy organizers for this amazing program. And thank you for watching my presentation. Hello everyone, I'm Mitali Bolkar and I'm here to present my project of Outreach and Linux Kernel Internship. My project was to create a scheduler test suit to understand functionality and performance of core scheduling. My mentor was Vineet Pillai. About me, I am an engineering student at IIT Roorkee, India. I am also an Outreach Summer Intern with a Linux Kernel. Talking about my project, let's first discuss about a core scared feature. Core scheduling aims at making hyperthreading safer from hardware vulnerabilities like speculative execution attacks. SMT, that is simultaneous multithreading, when enabled, helps running multiple tasks at same time while maintaining computer performance. It virtually doubles the cores that are on CPU. It groups trusted tasks on a core. It treats the CPUs in SMT core as a unit, finding the highest priority task on all CPUs. That task will drive the scheduling decisions. If another task is found that is compatible with high priority task, it will be able to run on a sibling CPU. Otherwise, that sibling will have to be forced idle. Coming on to my internship goals, my task was to write a comprehensive test suit to simulate scheduler workloads, then to collect traces, compare the performance results with baseline and SMT off, and to reiterate on the test suite to add more capabilities. The main point was to analyze the perf traces and detect if the feature is working as expected, that is, no trusted tasks get to share a core. As I move forward to my internship, goals were revised. It was to create a KSELF test to check and compare the performance with SMT enabled, SMT enabled with core scheduling and SMT disabled. What I did was, I created a self test that ran two threads on a core. One thread is a CPU stressor and another one is a memory stressor. This test has five variants. First, both threads run without cookie. The next was to run one thread with cookie and other without cookie and vice versa. Fourth one was to run both threads with separate cookie and in the last variant, one sibling is turned off and tests are run on just online sibling of core without cookie. Each mentioned variant runs for a few seconds. In my case, I ran for 5 seconds. I checked which test was performing worse than hyperthread of test case. Future work. Um, coming on to future work, in upcoming time, I am going to build on this small test case and come up with full-fledged test suit to generalize the current Python core sketch script by Julian which works best for virtual machines to be able to work on all operating systems. Throughout this internship, I learned a lot of things. I learned about Linux kernel development. I learned how to write kernel code, what is API and how to use it in the code. I learned about few tools and commands like GDB and perf. Talking about perf, it is very powerful. 
It can instrument CPU performance counters, trace points, K probes, U probes. It is also included in Linux kernel under tools slash perf. I learned how to work with other people on same task and to ask questions when you are stuck. Communicating with people and community really helps. At last, I am grateful to my mentor Vinit Pillai for being patient, teaching me and guiding me throughout the internship. And thanks to Outreachy for this amazing opportunity. It was overall a great experience. These are some resources which I used during this internship. Thank you so much for everyone for your attention. Thank you. to my work in the Linux kernel as an Outreach intern for the December 2020 cohort with mentors Daniel Vetter and Melissa Wen. I'm from India and I'm interested in low-level systems, kernel development and programming languages. As part of my internship, I worked on the virtual KMS driver, which is part of the Dry Devil or GPU subsystem. The virtual kernel mode setting driver is a software-only model of the KMS driver. It is very helpful to uh, enable a virtual display uh, without um, requiring a hardware support. Uh, this is uh, great for running tests or X on machines where we don't have hardware support but we still want to uh, uh, check the robustness of our code uh, like within a CI. My project mainly comprised two code areas. One of them was the VKMS driver which is part of the GPU or uh, dry double subsystem. Uh, the other part was uh, the Intel GPU tools uh, test suite, which is a collection of tools for development and testing uh, of the DRM driver from user space. <coughs> the initial goals for my internship were in two parts. One of them was to expose uh, the VKMS uh, driver through the config of this file system. The other was to introduce a uh, vBlankless or virtual hardware mode. Uh, now, ConfigFS is a file system that enables creating, managing, or destroying kernel objects from user space, and it is very useful when you want to, say, uh, test or run multiple instances of a single driver simultaneously. <coughs> uh, about the VKMS, uh, about the virtual hardware mode, uh, now VKMS tries to mimic actual hardware by mimicking uh, the interrupts that are found in uh, graphics hardware, which are called vertical blanking interrupts. Uh, we wanted to introduce a feature where it can also emulate virtual hardware, that is the hardware used in uh, virtual machines in uh, MU or by KVM. So uh, this would mean uh, a feature where uh, where we can have a KMS driver without vertical blanking interrupts or a V-blankless mode. Uh, however, a month into the internship, we realized that our initial goals are not very feasible uh, and uh, uh, given the amount of time we have, so we decided to only focus on implementing a vblankless uh, mode and preserving the tests, uh, except the tests which uh, depend on vblank interrupts directly. Uh, I initially thought the implementation would be as uh, simple as uh, checking if uh, virtual hardware mode is enabled and then uh, disabling the vblank interrupts and cleaning up the code a bit, and that would be it. Uh, that was not to be. Uh, when we disable the vblank interrupts, all the tests fade. Uh, this was, uh, you know, uh, this obviously happened because uh, the tests were not written in mind, uh, you know, written keeping in mind that we might have code where we need to skip uh, vertical blanking interrupts. So we had to modify the tests a bit, uh, wherein the tests check if uh, vertical blanking interrupts are enabled. Uh, if they are not, then uh, all the tests that require vertical blanking interrupts or specifically check operations related to vertical blanking interrupts uh, are skipped. Uh, uh, well, uh, all the tests passed. I thought that would be it. Uh, but turns out, uh, even for the tests that passed, there were some demessage uh, errors. Uh, I realize this is because uh, it is not necessary that before and after my patch, the tests are passing the same way. Uh, definitely the code has changed and there might be some errors under the hood which are not affecting our tests, uh, which our tests are not looking for, but there are uh, errors that can uh, uh, cause crashes uh, still. Uh, so there were two errors. One was a memory allocation problem. Uh, we solved that uh, by using a virtual malloc, uh, which uh, uh, you know allocates memory uh, over uh, over a few pages uh, instead of uh, looking for a contiguous physical memory. Uh, the other error we were facing was a flaky VMAP allocation error, which was already present uh, in the VKMS driver. 
uh, but uh, it was uh, interacting with my patch to uh, uh, produce a kernel panic. Uh, thankfully, uh, around this time, uh, the part of the code that was uh, where this error was happening, uh, it was uh, changed a bit uh, in an unrelated patch by Thomas Zimmerman, which solved it. Uh, uh, so good to go, right? No, there was tests that were still failing. Uh, so a, a test that were based on CRC, uh, which checks for data loss in the frames uh, that are being sent to the screen, were failing. Uh, this was because CRC is currently implemented around the vertical blanking interrupts. Uh, so we need to refactor a lot of code and refactor a lot of tests also and uh, implement CRC as a one-shot operation. Uh, this would, since this would require a significant amount of testing and uh, refactoring, uh, we decided that at least for the first patch introducing virtual hardware mode, we can just skip all CRC uh, tests and operations. And well, after this, uh, my patch uh, is something that we are mostly very happy with. So, um, Outreachy taught me a lot. Uh, during my code review and uh, in the process of iterating over patches, I uh, learned a few things, which are, uh, you know, checking the message logs, even if test results are preserved, because maybe uh, under the hood things are working differently, and it's uh, important to keep an eye on them. Uh, also, that you know, every time we change code, we need to check for new race conditions, and you know, maybe sometimes uh, there are no more race conditions uh, that uh, you know might happen because of the change in code. Uh, so uh, we also need to be careful uh, to remove the locks uh, around uh, this this part where we we are relatively sure the race conditions might not happen. Uh, I also learned how to use the atomic interface, uh, which is used extensively in the DRM uh, subsystem, and uh, the patch review process uh, also helped me write uh, cleaner code, which uh, also becomes very easy to test later on. I also learned idiomatic C, I learned tools like Ftrace, Chemium, Git, uh, and a few general things about software, how it can be very tough um, and very rewarding also. Uh, planning ahead is very important and having a grace period where you can catch up in case something goes wrong is also uh, necessary. Uh, working as part of an inclusive community makes a lot of difference in terms of motivation and quality of work and uh, it also helped me uh, overcome my imposter syndrome uh, to uh, you know, ask questions in open forums. Uh, I'm very grateful to the uh, DRM subsystem for being uh, such a wonderful community to be part of. Uh, in the first part of my internship, I did uh, I solved some low-hanging fruit issues, uh, which really helped me get acquainted with the system. Here are the links to them. Uh, I plan to continue working on uh, the VKMS driver, and uh, this is what I've thought for my future work. Uh, uh, last. Uh, Lastly, I would like to say that I'm very, very thankful to my mentors, uh, Daniel and Melissa, uh, who were so uh, patient uh, and allowed me the time to make mistakes and grow and taught me so much about uh, software. And a uh, uh, huge thanks to uh, Sage and uh, Vaishali and Helen and, and all my fellow interns for making Outreach such a wonderful experience uh, and great community to be part of. Uh, earlier, I used to think that Outreach is majorly about building software. Uh, and best practices, I realize it's more about uh, building a software community which is uh, diverse, inclusive, welcoming, and uh, uh, a wonderful uh, safe space to be part of. Uh, uh, that's all from me, and I would like to thank you. Hi, my name is Shansaya bagdolet and today I would like to talk about my internship at Outreachy. This summer, I was an intern for Linux kernel under supervision of my mentors. Pavel Tatashin and Tyler Hicks. The main objective of this internship was to introduce kernel self-tests for kernel same page merging feature or KSM. The kernel self-tests are a set of small tests that exercise individual code paths in the kernel. What is KSM? KSM is a memory saving feature which makes use of duplicated pages. It merges only private and anonymous pages and can be enabled by using a metadevice syscall. Since virtual machines contain a lot of pages with the same data, KSM was initially intended for virtual machines, but now any applications that generate many instances of the same data 
can use KSM. KSM performance can be tracked by using its sys files where you can find information such as the number of shared pages or sharing pages. I started off by writing some unit tests. Unit tests are used to independently test the functionality of separate modules. I implemented several unit tests for KSM during this internship. The first test validates that with different tunables, the right number of pages are merged. Along with that, we must also check that no longer duplicated pages must be automatically unmerged by KSM. Uh, also, KSM treats differently zero pages. It depends on user pages tunable, so it can either merge it with the special kernel zero page or treat them as other usual duplicated pages. And finally, the last test validates that KSM is properly handling pages in different NUMA nodes. So for instance, if there are two identical pages in two different NUMA nodes, they can be either isolated from each other or be merged. After unit tests, I implemented some performance tests. Uh, these tests are a little different than unit ones, since performance tests are mostly intended for developers when they are making some changes to MM subsystem to see if their changes are somehow affecting the performance of KSM. And there are two key points in performance tests. The first one is, of course, merging speed. Uh, in these, the first test provides merging speed of duplicated pages in megabytes per second. And the second test evaluates latency of copy and write breaks. Uh, when we want to modify already merged page, uh, these pages must be copied again so we can write on them. So this so this, this process of copying adds some overhead. Uh, as a result, uh, this test provides two numbers, one for write access speed for unshared pages, and the second one is write access speed for KSM merged pages. Uh, during this internship, I learned certainly a lot about kernel development overall structure and its cycle, for example, uh, difference between RC trees and Linux next tree, and how different subsystems are maintained. Also, since it is open source, it is not enough to write just a piece of code. You have to conform to the established uh, style of communication and uh, I learned a lot about the structure of patches on, and how to properly send them. Uh, in addition, I gained a very in-depth knowledge about the memory management subsystem, uh, about its overall structure and code base, and etc. Um, and finally, I had some experience with Git, but uh, thanks to this internship, I was able to practice it on a more uh, complex and big project. And also, I used virtual machines for the first time. I mainly used them for testing my newly compiled kernel. Um, I would like to thank all the outreach organizers and especially my mentors for letting me gain a lot of knowledge throughout this summer and that's it from me thank you for your attention and listening bye thank you interns so i hope 
you are amazed, impressed, and if you want to find out more about these interns or find out how you can help out. Um, I have some contact information here. Companies or individuals can donate. We always need Linux kernel developers to volunteer as mentors and help review patches. Let me pause and give one final thank you to the mentors behind all these interns. I believe each one mentioned their mentors. Pavel, Tyler, Melissa, Daniel, Venice, Hans, and Johan. These were the key mentors that made the internships possible this round. Um, please outreach about the program in your professional circle, your local communities. And again, if you want to find out more about any of these interns, mentors, coordinators, look on the outreachy.org website. Thank you.